Fight everything you want on the people. Everything. Use your wildest imagination. You can think it, you can write it on the people. Feed it every morning. Wreck you one year from now. See how much. That ain't no theory I could. That's all success. That was a how the years tell me. It's very real. Yes. It's a very, very important piece to success. It's a principle of success. Every wealthy person knows. If you do not have it written down, your chances of it happening is reduced drastically because it's a principle of success. You have to have everything you want written. I don't know nobody wealthy don't have any stuff written on a piece of paper. I don't know nobody. Teacher success is what is called future orientation. That means top people, top 10% of people think about the future most of the time. They think about the future most of the time and they practice a concept used by top people called idealization. They imagine they have no limitations and they imagine you the way of a magic wand can make your future Perfect in every way. If I teach a, a program, coaching and mentoring program to business owners, and I tell them that if you come and work with me for one year, I will show you how to double your income and double your time off within 12 months. Everybody does. It's very simple. I hand them out a spiral notebook. Dual notebook. I say, what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to write, ask you to write down 10 goals that you'd like to accomplish in the next 12 months. Write them in the present tense as though they are already in reality. That I will learn, but I earn. Now, when you write it down, you engage in what is called a psychoneuromotor activity. By doing the handwriting, you actually program it into the hard drive of your subconscious mind. And I've had people do this exercise once, and a year later, they found a list of goals, and they were astonished to find that eight of the ten goals have been achieved. Now, here's the key. Do not refer to the previous day. What you do is you turn it over and you rewrite your goals again today. Here's what will happen. When you first write down 10 goals, there will be the first things that occur to you. The next day, when you write them now without reference, you will change the order. You may actually drop off one or add something else. The wording will change in the goals, which is very important because your subconscious mind is activated by decision of the words that you use. And so you'll find yourself writing the goals differently in different order and sequence. And at a certain point, you'll find yourself every morning writing the same 10 goal. And then, one by one, they start to be achieved, replaced by your goal. And people say, okay, but what if it doesn't work? No, no, that's the wrong question. What if it does work? All it costs, spiral on the and two minutes a day, maybe five minutes. What if it can transform your life, as it has done for millions of other people, with no exception, in 56 countries where I've spoken. So if it works for everybody, everywhere in the world, it will probably work for that. All it takes is five minutes a day. It's really a test of how much you really want those goals. Is do you have the discipline to rewrite them every day? If you will do that, front will always. Tire success causes. You know, the very act of writing goals raises your self-esteem. It improves your self image It increases your self-confidence. Not that it's, and it activates your creator and mind. You start to see all kinds of ideas and ways to achieve the goals that you've written. It's so powerful. It's literally life change. And one technique that I have never written a goal that I didn't achieve. And I've gone from literally from rags to riches, from being broke to being worth an enormous amount of money. And it was exactly what I wrote down. It all comes true eventually. What? You've got to have a visual board. It's what I'm telling you works. To say no magic trick. Now here's the exercise on what you do. Write everything you want from God on a piece of paper. Be as detailed as you can. Write it down. The object for you is to write down 300 things. Because I know 300 things that you could use. When you get to number 75, you're going to get stuck. Because your mind isn't conditioned to think way out there. So you're going to try to stay in your little list. But I want you to just open up your imagination. If you could have anything you wanted, Put it on a piece of paper. Anything. How many cars? What kind of car? Get good. Where you want your next house to be? Put everything you want on a piece of paper. Do not stop until you have 300 things. It's going to take you a while. I'm telling you, when you get to 75, you, your brain going to lock up. But keep writing it down. Every morning. 
Read your list. Take five minutes and read your list every night, every morning. One year from today. One, wait one year from today. And take a pen out and go down on your list and check off anything that has happened for you that's on that list. If you do that in faith, if you read your list with the expectation that God is going to do some great things for you, at the end of one year, you will be stunned, absolutely stunned at how much stuff comes off that list. At minimum, 10% of your list to come true. You know how I know? Because I know a lot of people that have done it. But most people can't sustain that level of discipline to manifest the things that they want in, in their life. All of my computers have my vision board on it. Every iPad, tablet I got, laptop. When I pull it, I have my vision board on it. Because that's the signal I'm sending to God that I believe this is what you're going to do for me. You'd be saying, I take stuff, I got to get a new vision board now, because there's a lot of stuff off that vision board that I put on there like a year ago or two years ago that then came true. Write the vision and make it plain. You do them two things starting today. Write your list, read it every morning, every night, one year, check it out. You'll be stunned. Watch and see what God do. God keeps all his promises. If you do not have like, don't tell me you wish your life was better, because you're lying to me and you're lying to yourself. Four major obstacles. A, fear of rejection, of criticism. Fear is the key to goal setting. Don't tell anybody. That goals, the only people you discuss your goals with are the people like who also have goals, who will encourage you, your goals, and will tell you that your goals are attainable. Tell you that you can do it. Encourage you to believe it. So the second reason that you don't set goals is people don't know how. People think, well, you just write down, you want to hit. Oh, well, that's helpful, but it's not enough. The third reason, C, is that, um, People don't realize the importance of it. You've been brought up in a family where goals were not constantly emphasized. You saw the same with people. Don't talk about them, work on goals all the time. And you can actually drift along, not even where goals are central. D is fear of failure. We very carefully protect ourselves from these feelings of low self-esteem. And how do we do that? Sabotage ourselves unconsciously by not setting goals for ourselves. Some you don't set goals for yourself. You either. So, the ability to set goals and to make plans for their accomplishment. Master skill. If you master all other skills, this, your life will be to that degree. Your life will be diminished dramatically. Now, desire. And this is where we start. Desire is the only real limit. Your ability. Only question you ever have to ask is how bad they Want it. You want it badly enough. Boy, success is hungry. Fear that you guard to desire. A, it must be. You can't say, I want someone to love me. You cannot set a goal for another person. You want to be in a perfect relationship. So what you do is you describe your relationship. Down and you make a list of the person. As though you were going to hire someone to run your company. You make a list of the perfect person and you describe them in. Height, weight, size, get quality, background, check, I leisure time, activity, everything. Well, I have given this exercise to countless people. They've been astonished at how fast and the very act of realizing it by writing it down by setting weight. Yeah, writing it down. Active force field attraction starts to draw that. Same with business relations. And B. It must be burning, intense, passion. In fact, we are working on your major definite purpose. There's a measure. You know where it is? Come very patient. Physical speed of having to patient. Always structuring your times. You are sleeping them out. But only that. You want to get up and get going. The next stage, number two, belief. If you have a belief that you don't deserve success, or if you have a belief Am I smart enough? Am I good enough? Do I deserve success? You're going to have opposing goals and opposing beliefs. So let's say if your goal is to make $100,000, but your belief is that you only deserve to make $50,000, you're going to be out of sync or out of vibration. 
and they'll basically cancel each other out or you'll do a little bit of hard work and then you'll sabotage your success or you'll think you can achieve it for a day or two. So belief is absolutely important. You absolutely believe it. You walk, talk, feel, behave, get results. Your belief. If you feel confident, you act confident. But if you don't feel confident, act confident and it will cause you to Now number three, right here. You pull them out of the air where they have no substance at all is you write them down on paper. And when you write a goal down, you engage in what is called a psychoneuromotor activity. You activate your visual powers, your audio powers, and your kinesthetic powers, and whatever you might get. Only 3% of Americans have written goals. You know something? Everybody works for them. The fourth key is determine all the reasons why you want the goal. If you want to be successful, think of 10 or 20 or 100 or 300 things you want to do, your success, you will be like a force. Now the fifth key, analyze your starting position. Can't go from broke, but it's a get bigger amount. Remember the reality principle. What's the reality? Get on the scales and you weigh yourself and you honestly admit, this is where I am. If you want to be fit, you go down and you... Yes. Number six, set a deadline. Aeneas Nin once said that your subconscious can work against you because when you set a big goal, you're disrupting your subconscious. So your subconscious mind will attempt to sabotage you. Tells you, ah, you can't give this goal. Get on here. Doubt. It's okay as long as you know what it is. If your goal is big enough, set sub-deadline. You may set a 10 or 20 year goal, and then break it down year by year. So a person says, well, if you set a goal, and, and you don't achieve your goal by the deadline. It's just a guesstimate that enables you to focus. We cannot live without deadline. If for some reason you don't achieve your goal by the deadline, we set a new deadline. Number seven is identify the obstacles you will have to overcome. With regard to obstacles, there's always something that is gone. There are no obstacles. It is not a goal. It's merely an activity. Now, there's a very powerful principle called the principle of constraints. And what it says is that there's always one limiting factor or constraint or bottleneck between you and your goal that sets the limit which you achieve your goal. Now, the 80-20 rule applies Average people always blame their problems on external circumstances. Black people look inside themselves. The things that are holding you back are just the lack of a skill, the lack of a quality, lack of discipline, or the lack of a particular knowledge or skill. Only 20% of the reasons you are not achieving your goals are on the outside. So always start with Number eight is to identify the additional knowledge and skills that you'll need to achieve. Ross, to achieve a goal that you've never achieved before, you will have to develop skills that you've never had before. And here's the great breakthrough thought that changed my life at the age of 23, is that all business skills are learnable. Yes, sir. What one skill, if I was absolutely excellent at it, helped me the most to achieve my goal? What one skill would have the greatest positive impact in your life? What one skill would help you the most to achieve your most important goals? Say, well, ooh, if I was good at that, I'd save myself years of hard work. People say, Jesus, it'd take me a week, a month, a year, two years to learn that skill. Life has always been hard. Life will always be hard. Only no hopers and thumb suckers with no future expect things to accomplish great things. You have to work hard. Number nine, it's a list of everything you'll have to do and then organize it to evolve by sequence. Once you have a list organized by sequence priority, you have the goal of stopping times is full without thousand percent. Oh, number 10. Realize the most powerful faculty you have is the ability to imagine the goal has already created. 
see your goal as a reality every day. Your job is to give to the universe an absolute crystal clear the goal that you want. Go ahead, get Number 11 is back your goals and plans. Persistent determination. 95% of the goals that you have for yourself in life will attain as long as you as long as you become unstoppable. The primary reason why people don't attain their goals is, first of all, they don't have them, and second of all, they should. Your persistent measure of your belief in yourself is so every time you persist, your belief intensifies. When your belief intensifies, your desire intensifies. Your desire intensifies, your motivation intensifies, which makes you even more and more driven, recessed in the attainment of your goals. Every act of persistence strengthens you and increases your ability to persist even more. Everything you do builds habits, success, lock in deeper and deeper, and ultimately guarantee yourself. Remember, there are no real limits on what you can accomplish except for the limits that you place on yourself. There's a direct relationship between the level of clarity you have about who you are and what you want in virtually everything you accomplish in life. Average people just throw themselves in life like a dog chasing a passing car and wonder why they never seem to catch it or keep anything worthwhile. For your desire to be intense enough, your goals must be purely personal. They must be goals that you choose for yourself rather than goals that someone else wants for you or that you want to achieve to please someone in your life. In goal setting, the process to be effective, you must be perfectly selfish about what it is that you really, really want for yourself. Simply means in setting goals for your life, start with yourself and work forward. One of the most important questions in goal setting is this. What do I really want to do with my life? When you begin, these will often feel a bit like fantasy, detached from reality. However, now your job is to make them concrete, like designing a dream house on paper. You start with your general goals, and then move to more specific goals. Many people make the mistake of overcomplicating goals and problems, but the more complicated the solution, the less likely it is to ever be implemented, and the longer the time it will take to get any result. Your aim should be to simplify the solution and go directly to the goal as quickly as possible. For example, many people tell me they would like to double their income. If they are in sales, I ask them, what is the fastest and most direct way to double your income? After they've come up with a series of suggestions, I give them what I consider to be the best answer. Double the amount of time that you spend face-to-face -face with qualified prospects. If you don't upgrade your skills or change anything else about what you are doing, but you double the number of minutes that you spend face to face with prospect each day, you will probably double your sales and double your income. According to studies that go back as far as 1928, the average salesperson today spends 90 minutes each day face to face with prospect. They organize their days efficiently to assure that they spend more minutes in the presence of people who can and will buy their products or services. 20% of what you do accounts for 80% of the value of all the things you do. In my advanced coaching program, we teach our clients to identify those 20% of activities that contribute the very most value and then do twice as many of them. Some of our clients double their productivity and subsequently their income in as little as 30 days with the approach, even if they've been working for many years in the same position. Always look for the simplest and most direct way get from where you are to where you want to go. Look for the solution that has the fewest number of steps. And most of all, take action. Get going, get busy, develop a sense of urgency. Best ideas in the world are of no value until they are implemented. In determining your true goal, use the magic wand technique. Imagine that you have a magic wand that you can wave over a particular area of your life. When you wave this magic wand, your wishes come true. The magic wand technique is fun on the one hand, quite revealing on the other. Whenever you imagine that you have a magic wand, your true goals in that area emerge. 
Here's another goal-setting question that reflects your true values. If you learn today that you only had months left to live, how would you spend your last months on Earth? Who would you spend the time with? Where would you go? What would you strive to complete? What would you do more of, less of? When you ask yourself this question, what comes to the top of your mind will be a reflection of your true value. Your answer would almost always include the most important people in your life. Very few people in this situation would say, well, I'd like to get back to the office and return a few phone calls. Is setting your true goal is an extension of imagining that you have no limitations? Make up a green list. If you had no limitations at all, Mark Victor Hansen, co-author, Chicken Soup for Toma, recommends that you sit down with a pad of paper and make a list of at least 100 goals that you want to accomplish in your lifetime. Then, imagine that you have all the time, all the money, or friends, all the abilities and all the resources necessary to achieve these goals. The amazing discovery you will make is that within 30 days after writing out this list of 100 dreams, remarkable things will begin to happen in your life. And the goals will start to be achieved at a rate you cannot even imagine today. Here's another goal-setting question. If you want a million dollars tomorrow cash, it's free. How would you change your life? The primary reason that we stay in situations that are not the best for us is because we fear change. But when you imagine that you have all the money that you'll ever need, do or be whatever you want, your true goals often emerge. Here's another question to help you clarify your true goals. What have you always wanted to do, but been afraid to attempt? When you look around your world and you look at other people who are doing things that you admire, what have you always wanted to do as well, you've been afraid of taking the chance. Have you ever wanted to start your own business? Have you wanted to run for public office? Have you wanted to embark on a new career? What have you always wanted to do? Been afraid to yeah. it. In setting goals for your life long and short term, you should continually ask yourself, what do I most enjoy doing in each area of my life? Press it. If you could do just one thing all day long in your work, what would it be? If you could do any job or full-time activity all the time, that would pay, what would it be? What sort of work or activity gives you the greatest joy and satisfaction? One of your aims in life is to enjoy as many peak experiences as possible. You achieve this by thinking back and identifying those moments of peak experience in your past, and then by imagining how you could repeat them in your present and future. What have been your happiest moments in life to now? How could you have more of those moments in the future? What do you really love to do? You should have goals for social and community involvement and contribution as well. Think about what kind of a difference you would like to make in your world. What organizations, causes, needs, or social problems would you like to work on or work in? What changes would you like to see in your world? Who is there who is less fortunate than you that you would like to help? If you were independently wealthy, what causes would you support? Most of all, what could you do today to begin making a difference in your world? Don't wait until some future day. Everything will be ideal. Instead, start today in some way. One of the most important areas of goal setting is your financial life. If you could earn and accumulate all the money you need, you could probably achieve most of your non-financial goals faster and easier than you can today. If your life were ideal, how much money would you like to earn each month, year? How much would you like to save and invest each month and year? How much would you like to be worth sometime in the future? What sort of estate would you like to accumulate at the time you retire? And when would you like that to be? Most people are hopelessly confused about their financial goals, but when you become absolutely clear about them for yourself, your ability to achieve them increases dramatically. When you are absolutely about what you want, you can then think about your goals most of the time. The more you think about them, the faster they will materialize in your life. This process, asking yourself questions about your goals 
in each part of your life begins to clarify your thinking and makes you a more focused and definite person. Now, here are three things you can do immediately to put these ideas into action. First, write down your three most important goals in life. Now, second, if you want a million dollars cash, it's free tomorrow. What changes in your life? You make any Third, you can wave a magic wand over your life. Have anything you wanted. What would you wish for? As Peter Drucker said, whenever you find something getting done, you find a monomaniac with a mission. The more you think about your major definite purpose, how to achieve it, the more you activate the law of attraction in your life. You begin to attract to you evolve opportunities, ideas, and resources that help you to move more rapidly towards your goal and move your goal more rapidly for you. When you have a major definite purpose, think about, talk about, work all the time, your outer world will reflect this like a mirror image. Then he thought, and our goal that you can clearly define your conscious mind will immediately start to be brought into reality by your subconscious mind and your superconscious mind, as we will discuss later. Imagine that you decided that you wanted a red sports car. You write this down as a goal. You begin to think about and visualize a red sports car. This process sends the message to your reticular cortex that red sports car is now important to you. This picture immediately goes up onto your mental radar screen. From that moment onward, you will start to notice red sports cars wherever you go. You will even see them driving and turning corners several blocks away. You will see them parked in driveways and in showrooms. Everywhere you go, your world will seem to be full of red sports cars. If you decided to buy a motorcycle, you would start to see motorcycles everywhere. If you decided to buy you would begin to notice posters, advertisements, pictures, and television specs with information on Hawaiian vacations. Whatever goal message you send to your reticular cortex activates your reticular activating system, make you alert to all possibility to make that goal reality. You will see stories in newspapers, recognize books on the subject wherever you go. You will receive information and solicitations in the mail. You'll find yourself in conversations about earning and investing money. It will seem as though you are surrounded by ideas, information, it can be helpful to you in achieving your financial goals. On the other hand, if you do not get clear instructions to your reticular cortex and your conscious mind, you will go through life as though you were driving in a fog. You will be largely unaware of all these opportunities and possibilities around you. You will seldom see them. Notice, wherever your attention goes, your life goes as well. When you decide upon a major purpose, you increase your level of attention and become increasingly sensitive to anything in your environment can help you to achieve that goal faster. Your major definite purpose can be defined as the one goal that is the most important to you at the moment. It must have the following characteristics. First, your major definite purpose must be something that you personally really, really want. Your desire for this goal must be so intense the very idea of achieving your major definite purpose excites you and makes you happy. And major definite purpose must be clear, specific. You must be able to define it in words. You must be able to write it down with such clarity that a child can read it and know exactly what it is you want and be able to determine whether or not you've achieved it. There, your major definite purpose must be measurable and quantifiable. Rather than make a lot of money, it must be more like, I earn $100,000 per year by a specific day. Four, your major definite purpose must be both believable and achievable. Your major definite purpose cannot be so big or so ridiculous that it's completely unattainable at the moment. I made this mistake once myself when I was younger. I first started setting goals. Set an income goal that was Ten times what I had ever earned in my life. After many months and no progress at all, I realized that my goal was not helping me. 
Because it was so far beyond anything I had ever achieved, it had no motivating power. In my heart of hearts, although I wanted it, I really did not believe it was possible. And since I didn't believe it was possible, my subconscious mind rejected it, and my reticular cortex completely failed to function. Don't let this be a gift. Your major definite purpose should have a reasonable probability of success, perhaps 50-50 when you begin. You've never achieved the major goal before. Set a goal that has an 80% or even 90% probability. Make it easy on yourself, at least at the beginning. Later on, you can set huge goals with very small probabilities of success, and you will still be motivated to take the steps necessary to achieve them. But in the beginning, set goals that are believable, achievable, and which have a high probability of success so that you can be assured of winning right from the start. Everyone wants to be a millionaire or a multimillionaire. The only question is whether or not you are willing to do all the things necessary and invest all the years required to achieve that financial goal. If you are, there's virtually nothing can stop you. Take out a sheet of paper and write down a list of 10 goals you would like to accomplish in the foreseeable future. Write them down in the present sketch, as though you have already achieved these goals. For example, you would write, I weigh 10 pounds, or I have earned X number of dollars per year. After you've completed your list of 10 goals, go back over the list and ask yourself this question. What one goal on this list, if I were to accomplish it immediately, would have the greatest positive impact in my life? At the same time, whatever goal you choose, write it on a separate sheet of paper. Write down everything you can think of that you can do to achieve this goal. And then take action on at least one item on your list. Write this goal on a 3x5 index card that you carry around with you and review it regularly. Think about this goal morning, noon, and night. Continually look for ways to achieve it. And the only question you ask is how. Your selection of a major definite purpose and your decision to concentrate single-mindedly on that purpose, overcoming all obstacles and difficulties until it is achieved, will do more to change your life for the better than any other decision you ever make. Whatever your major definite purpose, write it down and begin working on it today. Now, here are three things you can do immediately to put these ideas into action. First, answer the question. What one great thing would you dare to dream you knew you could not fail? Second, make a list of 10 goals you would like to achieve in the months and years ahead in the present tense. Select the one goal from that list that would have the greatest positive impact on your life. And third, make a list of everything that you could think of to do that will move you toward your goal. Take action on at least one thing you need.